He took the first step towards us. Just thank Him in your heart. Worship Him in your soul. He took bread. Thank you for this body, symbol of your body given for us. Thank you, Lord. Sense his presence. Sense that the moment they walked into this place, reach out and touch him. Whatever's going on in your life, reach out and touch Jesus.
had it not been for Jesus he'd have been living in his past had it not been for Jesus arresting him on the Damascus road he would have remained a violent persecutor, an insolent man and he would have died in his sin and went to a lost eternity but he didn't instead Jesus stopped him in his murderous tracks ah oh, come on Jesus stopped him in his murderous tracks saved his soul transformed his life and called him into the ministry to, the, to preach the gospel to the very people he once persecuted this is the same man who quoted and declared in 2 Corinthians 5 and 17 therefore if any man be in Christ he is a new creature old things are passed away behold all things are become new if that's happened to you shout hallelujah 
Saul the persecutor became Paul the preacher testifying I'm a new creation I'm a new creature in Christ the old is gone and the new has begun by the way brothers and sisters Jesus Christ changes lives Look around you in people's church this morning. It's full of people whose lives have been changed by Jesus. There are people though listening to God's word this morning. And you're haunted by a past. Your past, a bad past. Your past still haunts you every day. Brother, sister, don't let a bad past rob you of a brilliant future in Jesus. John 10 and 10, Jesus said the thief comes to steal, kill and destroy. By the way, your testimony, that's what you want to do. Even the devil's a thief and they try and steal your joy, kill your dreams and destroy your testimony. And do you know what he'll use? Your past. When you're doing well, he rig it up and throw it in front of you. I but if they only knew about you all those years ago, if they only knew the hidden parts of you, brother and sister, don't listen to him. He's not only a thief, he's a liar. He whom the Son sets free shall be free indeed. He's a liar, the father of lies. It's time to let go of the past. Let it go. Don't bring it with you. Keep your past where it should be in the past. In fact, Paul says, forgiving those things which are behind. Leave your past behind you this morning. Those things that are part are part of your past, they're not part of your future. Do you want to forget your past? Then give it to Jesus and let him put it under the blood that he shed for you and it'll be gone forever. I believe that. Let go of your past. I'm talking to somebody here this morning. Let go of your past. There's people sitting here and you're riddled with your past because you've made a mistake even as a Christian and it's living with you and people remind you of it all the time. Hold it. If he forgives, he forgets. As long as you go and sin no more. Like he said to the woman caught in adultery. Forgetting those things which are behind. Leave your past behind. Those things are not part of your future. They're part of your past. Leave them there. Put them under the blood forever. Let go of your past. Paul says forgetting the past. Secondly, he says reaching to the future. This one thing I do. Reaching forward to those things which are ahead. See where he's going. Brothers and sisters, don't let your past stop you enjoying your future. John 10 and 10, I say that the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But that's only half the verse. Jesus said, but I am come that you may have life. And that more abundantly. That's your future. That's your future. Life more abundantly. Life And that more abundant life with a capital L, everlasting life, eternal life, never ending life. Do you remember in John 11 and verse 25, Jesus declared to Lazarus' sisters, Mary and Martha, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he dies, yet shall he live. Whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? Mary cried, yes, Lord. And then Jesus commanded, take away the stone. Lazarus, come forth. And Lazarus came forth, bound hand and foot with the grave clothes. Jesus said, loose him and let him go. Jesus loosed him and let him go. Jesus raised Lazarus from death to life, from a dead past to a resurrected future. Brother and sister, old brother, and listen to God's word for you and I today. Listen to Ephesians chapter 2, verse 1. You, he made, and you he made alive who were dead in trespasses and, and sins in which you once walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the earth, the spirit who now works in the sons of disobedience, among whom also we all once conducted ourselves, listen, in the lusts of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature children of wrath, just as the others but God 
But God, who is rich in mercy because of his great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in trespasses, made us alive together with Christ and raised us up together and made us sit together in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus, that in the ages to come, here's your future, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace. For by grace have we been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works which any man should boast. Brothers and sisters, Paul says, reach forward to those things which are ahead. Don't go back or forward. Look at somebody and say, did you hear that? Don't go back or forward. Tell somebody. Tell somebody. Reaching forward to those things which are ahead. Listen, your future is within your reach. Your future is within your reach. This one thing I do involves letting go of the past and stepping into the future. That begins, though, thirdly, by living in the present. This one thing I do, I press toward the goal for the prize of the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. Stepping out in faith and believing God for our future means stepping out now. Today. Today. You can't do anything with your past now. It's gone. But you can step into your future. Beginning. Today. Today. Make a positive decision to follow Jesus today. It also means stepping out where you are. To go where he wants you to go. Stepping out of your safety mode, because that's frightening. But Peter did it in a life-threatening storm. He stepped out of the boat and he walked on the water to Jesus. But when he took his eyes of Jesus and saw the wind and the waves, he began to sink and he cried out, Lord, save me. Immediately, immediately, Jesus caught him by the hand and led him back into the boat or the ship or the fellowship. Stepping out of your comfort zone. Some of us are too comfortable today. Stepping out of your comfort zone, that can be uncomfortable. You've been so used to the same, same old, same old, same old. Brother and sister, for example, reach out and invite Sunday for next Sunday night to come to our special gospel celebration here next Sunday. Go and reach out to somebody. Ask somebody, invite somebody, bring somebody. Stepping out means going the extra mile for others. Giving the extra gift when needed and the extra help when required. Stepping out from the natural into the supernatural. That's where miracles happen. That's where God moves in power and demonstration. In answer to our stepping out in faith, believing him that all things are possible. Stepping out means taking the breaks of your life. Doing things you've never done before. Attempting things you've never attempted before. Seeing things you've never seen before. In fact, as we speak, the devil is waging war on the church of Jesus Christ and attacking all that is godly. Traditional marriage, the family unit, life in the womb, and the elderly. Can I hear an amen out there? The gender ideologies, the woke activists have shouted it loud and clear. I heard it on the radio or the TV. We're coming, we're coming, we're coming for your children. That even sounds demonic. That sounds satanic. I received information this week of new legislation put forward by the RSA, that's Relationship and Sexuality Education, being promoted by the Secretary of State to be implemented in our school system from zero to four year olds, five to nine year olds, nine to 12 year olds, and 12 to 15 year olds. This information is too graphic to mention, yet it's being allowed in schools and without parental consent. It's not right. Who will save our children? Thank God I also watched the clip of a lady who has taken the system to court on the grounds that such information borders on the grounds of child abuse. Thank God for that lady. Pray for her this morning. I don't know her name. I remember pastoring in Scotland with Linda. Linda and I, as parents, went to the boys' primary school. 
that was years ago to address the lowering of the age of consent for children. 16 parents turned up of a school of approximately 100 kids. Church, I believe it's time to take up our cross and follow Jesus in these perilous, dangerous, and demonic times. This is when the true church of Jesus Christ will stand up and be counted. Let me remind you, Jesus finished the sentence, the thief comes, but I am come that you might have life, and more abundantly. Brother and sister, don't let the devil destroy our children, our grandchildren's young minds and futures. We need to pray like never before for God to protect the generation coming after us. Would you say amen to that? This one thing I do, Psalm 27 verse 4 says, One thing I have desired of the Lord, that I will seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life, to behold the beauty of the Lord and the inquire in his temple. Mark 10 and 21, Jesus said to the rich young ruler, One thing you lack, go your way, sell whatever you have, give to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. Come and take up your cross and follow me. In John chapter 9, verse 25, the blind man was questioned about Jesus by his critics. He said, Whether he is a sinner or not, I don't know. One thing I do know, that though I was blind, that now I can see. A miracle before their eyes. This one thing I do. Ever heard of Martin Luther? Martin Luther did one thing in God. He stepped out in faith, leaving behind a religion and began a reformation. William Mulberforce did one thing. In God, he abolished slavery. Martin Luther King Jr. did one thing. In God, he addressed racism. Gladys Aylward did one thing, and God just saved the lives of hundreds of children from the Chinese communist regime. John Wesley did one thing, and God, he preached the gospel in the fields, the highways, and the byways around the United Kingdom and beyond, seeing thousands of souls swept, saved and swept into the kingdom of God. If these men and women could do this one thing in their lives, then surely the church of Jesus Christ and God can do one thing, Pray and pray and pray and pray until God answers and opens the windows of heaven and pours out his Holy Spirit in our land and in our nation. In fact, Jesus promised to do this one thing as well, didn't he? I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against me. Would you say amen to that? That's the church we're part of. A triumphant church, not a dead duck, but a triumphant church in Jesus. That's the church that we belong to. That's the church that will change our province, our nation, and heal this land. But in God, we can only do it by forgetting the past, by reaching to the future, and living in the present. People's church, we're living in the end times. In the last days, if you believe it, lift your hand. It's getting worse. The days of Noah are before our eyes. The days of Lot and all this perversion is before our eyes. Paul prophesied of these last days. 2 Timothy chapter 3 verse 1. But know this. You need to know what, what time it is in God's calendar and clock. But know this. Know this that in the last days talking about the last days 2,000 years ago. In the last days, perilous times will come. For men will be lovers of themselves. Lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unlove, holy, unloving, unforgiving, slanderers, without self-control, Brutal, despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. Listen to this now. Having a form of godliness. They look good and they sound good, but they're not good. They're false. Having a form of godliness, but denying its power. Here's what Paul says to Timothy. From such people, run as fast as you can. Turn away from them. Don't, get involved. Don't let them into your school. Don't let them into your home. Don't let them into your kids' lives. 
from such people turn away. I said it last week at some point, I can't remember when, but I said it last week. I believe two churches will exist in the end times. The apostolic church and the apostate church. The bride and the hearted woman. The Christ-centered church and the self-centered church. The Bible-based church and the anything goes church. The persecuted church and the pampered church. The Holy Spirit-filled church and the another Spirit-filled church. That's why the Lord Jesus laid down the gauntlet for those who wanted to follow him. In Mark chapter 8 verse 34. Whosoever desires to come after me, let him deny himself, take up his cross and follow me. For whosoever desires to save his life will lose it. But whosoever loses his life for my sake and the gospel will save it. For what shall it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his soul? Or what shall a man give in exchange for his soul? Judas Iscariot sold his soul for 30 pieces of silver. Pontius Pilate sold his soul for power and position. The rich young ruler sold his soul for his riches and his bank account. And Demas sold his soul for the, his love for the world and the things in it. That's why Jesus continues and it says, For whosoever is ashamed of me and of my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, of him the Son of Man will be ashamed when he comes in the glory of his Father with the holy angels. Church, I believe this church is the outcome of answered prayer. I don't believe we're here by chance. I don't believe all that happened to me and Linda when we came home was by chance. God is ahead of us. From a sad past turned into a joyful 14 years. We are the evidence of the fulfillment of a vision, a vision that God gave me in Scotland that has been fulfilled in Northern Ireland. We are living in the goodness of God and still living the dream. In spite of our faults and feelings, we're still living the dream and it's not over yet because we're pressing toward the praise. We have a God-ordained destiny to fulfill. The praise is the upward call of God in Christ Jesus. That's heaven's reward at the end. To me, the upward call of God ought to be the goal or the mark of every born-again believer. Like Paul who declared, I fought a good fight. Finished the race. I've kept the faith. There is therefore let up for me a crown of righteousness. That the Lord, the righteous judge, will give to me on that day. And not to me only, but to all who have loved his appearing. Oh, to hear the words of Jesus when you and I stand before him. Well done, good and faithful servant. Enter thy into the joy of your Lord. Church, it will be worth it all one day when we see Jesus. But oh, may no one in this service or watching online hear those dreadful words from the same Lord. Depart from me, you cursed. I never knew you. Oh, brother and sister. The enemy wants you to quit. To give up. To give in. To throw in the towel. But don't. Why? Because all heaven is watching us. All heaven is cheering you on. To keep on going on with Jesus. Listen to Hebrews 12 and 1. Therefore we also since we are surrounded. By so great a cloud of witnesses. Let us lay aside every weight. And the sin which so easily ensnares us. And let us run with endurance the race that is set before us. Listen. Looking on to Jesus. The author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him 
endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. For consider him. Don't give up. Look at him. Don't give in. Look at him. Look at Jesus. For consider him who endured such hostility from sinners against himself, lest you become weary and discouraged in your souls. Heaven is shouting at you today. Heaven is shouting to you and I today. Don't give up. Don't give up. Don't give in. You're on the winning side. Ah, oh, come on. I believe Jesus is speaking to you and me. Brother, sister, friend, son, daughter, mom, dad. I believe he's saying, don't quit. Don't quit. I've loved you with an everlasting love. And with cords of loving kindness I've drawn you. My love bears all things. Believes all things. Hopes all things. Endures all things. My love never fails. People will fail you. Church will fail you. But I'll never fail you. I've loved you with an everlasting. Don't quit. Paul declared, For you know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, that though he was rich, yet for our sakes he became poor, that we through his poverty might become rich. And Peter declared, Who his own self bore our sins on his own body on the tree, that we being dead to sin might live under righteousness. By his stripes we are healed. Jesus suffered and died on the cross for every one of us. Now hold on. Jesus suffered and died on the cross for you. Make it personal. And me. He gave us life. He shed his blood. He paid the price for your forgiveness, for your freedom, and for your future in heaven. You may have fallen. You may have failed. You may have forsaken him over the years. Maybe your past has caught up yet. But he declares this morning, don't give up. I'm here for you today. Don't give up. I am here for you today. Unsaved friend, give him your life. Give him your past. Give him your future. Now. Nah. Backslater, come on. Come home now. Nah. Stop keeping him waiting. What are you waiting on? Get out of that cesspit, that pigsty that you're living in, and come back to the Father. He's waiting on you. As soon as you turn towards home, he'll run and put his arms around you. Cold Christian, indifferent believer, come on. Do you want to live your life criticizing everybody, running everybody down, fighting everybody artless? Is that the way you want to end your life and go into the presence of God? No. Have a loving like God. Live for Jesus and reach out in his love towards others. This one thing I do. Will you declare today that to me? No, no. Declare it to him, not me. Will you declare today, this one thing I do, I'm leaving my past behind me. I'm trusting in Jesus for my future. And I'm going to follow Jesus as my Lord and Savior from today. Pastor George, please pray for me. I will, of course, alone. In the name of Jesus. There is come a day when no heartache shall come, no more clouds in the sky, no more tears to dim the eye. All is peace forevermore on that high.